Here it is again, a heart of excitement in the form of a girl who hates her life. Ever since the popularity crest of Jeff Rosenstock, it's been a question to me of how I haven't yet scouted out for more conceptual and eclectic powerhouses in the angsty fields of pop punk and emo, although that just might be my own ignorance speaking at this point. Albums from Bomb the Music Industry, The Arrogant Sons of Bitches, and of course Rosenstock's own solo material give you the sense of a very upsetting existential dread that lingers inside us all like a nudging bacteria, but it also offers the hyperactive sense of humour that bears its teeth like the shit-eating grin of a Mike Patton. There are musical haberdasheries all around, but the melodies and vocal lines of each song stick with you like reassuring mantras to repeat yourself in times of crippling self-doubt. Glass Beach is a band led by none other than Jay McClendon of Casio Dad, and the collective vision gives you the sense of somebody with way too much on their chest to be able to unload slowly or with any delicate touch. Instead, it all comes out as a blissful rush, presented a little bit like a theatre show, with the expected opening and grand finale being loud and huge like a dropped tennis ball in a dog daycare centre. It reminds me a little bit of Hawaii Part 2, or Tally Hall, except with this one I don't exactly feel like I'm listening to Wiggles every now and then. I've been sitting on this album for a while and did consider a review, but I should have expected that waiting way too long would have led to the hashtag review glass beach mob eventually worming their way into my comment section. I'm finally doing this review for the sake of my own health, because it was only going to be a matter of time before a brick flew through my window scribbled on with Sharpie. The first glass beach album has what you could say are rock songs, but they're given a very twee and splendid touch up with colourful synths that you would hear in an SNES game. Friday night, foggy streets and Christmas lights Wake me up on Saturday Grab my hands and run away into the other The second half of the album is scattered with instrumental interludes that wouldn't sound too out of place in a Yoshi's Island ROM hack. And on Planetarium, Jay sings through an auto-tune filter over an instrumental that wouldn't sound too out of place in an old Mario Kart game. And the result is charmingly robotic. <laughs> The instrumentals are what shine the brightest on this album for me, and Jay will either strain their voice trying to go hard on the first few epic style rock opera acts, or calmly and perfectly complement the summery melancholy of a track like Calico, thanks to vocal filters that help their voice dissolve into the aquatic veneer. For something admittedly fatiguing to listen to during the latter stretch of the track listing, the first Glass Beach album is mostly well paced, taking slow breaths in the right moments instead of making this an utter marathon to complete. I mean, mind you, you'll still be puffed out by the end. It seems Glass Beach really wanted this to be the culmination of all their musical prowess, emotional angst, stories to tell. It defies labels and instead is just whatever the hell it wants to be at any given time. The album doesn't focus on internal feelings though, instead it finds a means of exerting their compassion through the perspectives of many others, and in doing so they learn a lot about themselves. Bedroom Community is itself an ode to the very concept of writing and releasing music in your bedroom to be heard by other people in their bedrooms, even if you may have not found the answers to heal your wounds. And maybe that is more productive and outsourced than any mass media module that would simply manipulate these insecurities and suffering for the sake of some good dosh. The entire album has such an infectiously bright spirit, but it's only to cope with the radiant hopelessness that undergoes descriptions of scenes that reminisce on depression, heartbreak, betrayal, self-centeredness, and convincing somebody else that it will all be worth it in the end. Yoshi's Island is perhaps the most upfront about Jay's gender-fluid identity, describing the thoughts that they run through as they attempt to convince others, but mostly themselves, of who they really are. It's a powerful lyrical moment over an instrumental that momentarily sounds like the shop theme in an RPG. These songs are not part of any big narrative, I'd like to think it's more like cut up pieces of string that happen to end up in the same bag. That said, you'll hear in the early parts of the album that Jay describes somebody standing in the starlight, but by the end of the album, the starlight fades out. So Jay has some concept of how to tie it all together, like a very wistful and monumental coming of age film. Or do you reckon that was the best way to put it? Like a coming of age film? Now it just makes too much sense. I actually appreciate this album a lot, because it doesn't hold itself to one gimmick, but it also has the competency to not make that commitment to gimmicks a gimmick itself. I'm lingering on a 7 out of 10 here. I have a feeling that this album will merely stay a cult favourite just for this year in particular, but something keeps nudging my ribcage to tell me that it deserves to be considered much more than that, and it's not the fans in my comment box, no. Albums like these are the crests of bedroom pop in the era of Bandcamp, because there are such formative statements on the musical and artistic ambition you can achieve on your own even without a huge record label that gives you a piggyback and then subsequently dumps you into a large vat of expired gravy to fend for yourself. Glass Beach is special, and despite me living in a pipe dream because nothing bends to my word, albums like these should eventually be hailed as classics.